James 3, 1 through 12, came in the tone. Not many of you should presume to be teachers, my brothers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. If anyone is never at fault in what he says, he is a perfect man, able to keep his whole body in check. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boast. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole person, sets the whole course of his life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and creatures of the sea are being tamed and have been tamed by man. But no man can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse men, who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers, can a fig tree bear olives, or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. Small but powerful. I'm just going to go to God. Father God, we just come right now, Lord God, opening ourselves up to you. Lord, we pray that as we sit here today, Lord God, you would just imprint your word upon our hearts. Lord God, that you would say something to us today, Lord God, that we could take from here, Lord God, and live a better life, Lord God, serving you. We are here to learn, learn from your feet, Lord God, and we just pray that your spirit would come and minister. In Jesus' Lord name I pray. Amen. Small but powerful. That's the tongue for you. You know, growing up, I always heard the saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. I remember reciting this countless of times when me and my brothers would go at each other, talking about each other, you know, whose dad was the best, whose dad was a deadbeat. That's what we did. You know, my mom would often tell us, you know, if you don't have anything good to say, then you shouldn't say anything at all. Even while we were kids, she was trying to get us to understand that our words mattered. But you see, as a child, I never really understood the power of the tongue and how it could easily destroy whole lives. Nowadays, it's so clear to see the, the evidence of the harmful words because all you have to do is cut on the TV, look on the internet, and there's a constant reminder of kids who've been bullied, families who've been torn apart because their children have chosen to take their own lives because someone said something so hurtful. Like the passage I just read in the Bible, it's very clear on how even though the tongue is small, it's extremely powerful. James compares the tongue to five different things that we're going to take a look at today. The first thing he said, it reminds him of a bit. A bit is a small piece of metal that is inserted into the mouth of a horse, causing an animal that clearly outweighs us to be controlled by us. We redetermine which direction the horse goes or even when he wants it to stop. The second thing is a rudder. A rudder is a small device on a boat that controls the direction the boat is headed in. It must maintain control against the winds and the current that would take the boat off track. Just as our tongues will set the direction in which our life takes, so the rudder does for the boat. A fire, James says. James says to consider what a great forest is set afire by a small spark. You see, the tongue also is a fire. A world of evil among the parts of the body, it corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire and is itself set on fire by hell. Just like a fire only needs a spark, our lives can be set ablaze by our words, especially, especially among family members. Because sometimes we often forget that we need to be patient, we need to be kind. We allow our tongues to be sharpened swords and cut them down with our words. You see, words can break our hearts, and even though broken bones may heal with time, a broken spirit caused by words may not heal so quickly. Words can spread like fire in our families, our church, and the community. The fourth thing he said it, it reminded him of was a dangerous animal. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, sea creatures, are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. I remember the children's story where it says, lions, tigers, and bears, oh my. But you see, all of these ferocious animals can in fact be tamed 
and made to perform in shows. Yet the tongue is more dangerous than all of these, for it cannot be tamed. It is always active. You know, I, I love reading Proverbs because Proverbs is so rich in its wisdom. Proverbs says that even a fool would seem wise and discerning if he could just keep his tongue. <laughs> the fourth thing, a spring. James talks about the hypocrisy of our own tongues when he says, with the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursings. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? How can water flow and be both? It's impossible, for we can't proclaim to love our God and hate his people. We can't praise God and talk about our neighbor. The last thing he compared it to was a fruit. Can a fig tree bear olives or a grape bear, fruit, bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. And for this, I think we need to look at the heart. For the Bible says that out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. You know, my mom always used to say that what was in me would eventually come out of me. Now, I'm not sure if she meant me being gay or the fact that God had given me such a gift to bring his word, but they were both etched very strongly upon my heart, so eventually they had to manifest themselves. And it's the same way with our hearts and our tongues, that whatever is in our heart, whatever our heart looks like, it's going to be manifested in the words we speak. If our heart is after God, then those words that we speak will be life-giving. But if it's not, then we will only speak death and destruction into other people's lives. And that's where Proverbs 18 and 21 says that the power of life and death are in the tongue. You see, we have the power to bring life or bring about death with the words we speak. The Bible says, and I love this, that the Bible says that the same resurrection power that resided in Christ also lives in us. You know, that means that the same spirit that touched Jesus Christ, that ministered to Jesus when he was weary, that worked through Jesus when he healed the sick and raised the dead, that resided with Jesus every single day he walked this earth, that same life-giving spirit resides in us today. Amen. So today, as we go and we read this word, I challenge you, in your situations, whatever they may be, speak life, not death. In, in your health, Speak life, not death. In your job, speak life, not death. In your finances, speak life, not death. Because the Bible says that the power of life and death is held in our tongues. We control what our lives look like simply by the words we speak. For the Bible says that we have the power to call those things that are not as though they were. You see, our words have that power that in the natural world, they can hurt or heal one's feelings and attitudes. However, in the spiritual world, they are containers of power that can change your life, direct your future, and allow you to get to a life, your life in line with God's will. Words can carry God's power to literally heal your body, bring fin financial blessings to your circumstances, and bring the promises of God's world into the natural realm. Small but powerful, that is our tongues. You see, the tongue is the epitome of dichotomy, but we must fight to control it with all we are. And you might say, how do we control the tongue so that we are proclaiming life, not death? Because I'll admit it to, to you, it is hard. Because when something arises, it's not always my first inclination to say, you know what, God, it's going to work out okay. Sometimes my first inclination is to be like, oh, Lord, have mercy. It's not going to happen. I can't do this. But in that instant, I turn off the power of God to say that, you know what, this power is going to work in my favor, that no matter what the situation is, it's going to work out all right. I I take that from myself and I say, you know what, it's not going to work out right. And I've already set that thing in course to not work out. But what do we need to do to get our lives in line with God where we're literally speaking life to everything we come in contact with? The first thing we need to do is we need to get into God's word. For it says, out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. We need to make sure that God's word are written up on our hearts. Because any situation that we may ever face or any situation we may ever go through, a word from God is right there for us. All we have to do is know it. No matter what the circumstances may be, because the Bible says that all things will work out to the good of those who love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose. And Jonathan said it today, that God said every good and perfect gift comes from above. That means God is just sitting there waiting on his children to access his word so he can drop down those blessings that he's already set aside for you. 
Oh, we got to get in his word. We need to study his word because once we study his word, when the devil throws those flaming arrows at us, we have our shield of faith that's up there and it says, no, the word says I'm more than a conqueror. No matter what may come against me, the word says I will Amen. prevail. No matter what the devil throws my way, I won't be weary, but I will rise up on eagle's wings and I will soar because that's what the Bible has called us to do. Secondly, we need to control our self-talk. Oh, we are our own worst enemies in this. <laughs> We're our own worst critics. We will talk ourselves out of our blessings before anyone else ever opens their mouths. But Romans 12, 2 says, Don't be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. We need to renew our mind to where our mind thinks exactly what God's thoughts are. Because God says, I'm lovely and I'm great and I'm awesome. And I'm going to believe that instead of what the enemy may throw at me. I'm going to believe what God said I can do, not what the enemy says I am. Because my God says I'm mighty. My God says I am awesome. That is a great thing. God says I am so worthy I'll send my son to die for you because I want you seated next to me in heaven. That's how great God has called you. See, when we come for or when we transform our mind, we need to be sure that no matter what arises, no matter what comes our way, that we can speak life. And another thing, we need to surround ourselves with people who speak life, not death. We need to make sure our friends are speaking life to our situations. Because I can tell you this, the easiest way to not change your self-talk is to have someone there speaking those same words that you're saying to yourself. You need somebody who when you begin to say, I can't, they said, no, you will, because God has said you will. Mm -hmm. That's what you need in your life. Mm -hmm. And thirdly, and probably the most important thing that we need to do is learn to think before we speak. <laughs> if we can just stop. Before we say what we, our first mindset wants to say, if we could just stop and think, eh, no, nope. I'm going to say God said, be blessed. I'm going to say God says, be blessed today. I understand what your, circumstance, your circumstances are telling you right now, but I'm going to tell you to be blessed today. I'm going to tell you what the word of God says. And that's where it all, it's all interconnected. Because once we get into the word, our, our hearts are going to be transformed. Once we get into the word, our minds are going to be renewed. And once we get into the word, we'll have a word to share with someone else. Oh, it's a powerful thing, that little tongue. It's the smallest thing in the body, but it has the biggest thing. It can make the biggest mess. And it might be hard to control. But you know, I love the Bible because God. the Bible says that, but with the power of God, and all things are possible. All things are possible with, with the power of God. All you have to do is trust and believe. And once you do that, oh, that small but powerful thing will begin to speak life into every situation you have. Thank you.